take a seat, make yourself comfortable. The first presentation is by Andreas and Gregory. They are joining us here from Switzerland, from Zug, and they've launched their project, which, and their project Grizzly FI, we're going to find out about it. How to launch a project in rough conditions. As we know, it's a bear market, so they're going to share their story, and they're going to share their experiences. So can I please welcome the first presentation of the day, Andreas and Gregory. Can I have a small round of applause? Hello, hello. Hello, test. Hear you loud and clear. Over to you, Andreas and Gregory. Tell us your story. So you, you've, you've launched the project this year and you've had success already. You already raised 26 million, right? And you're gonna share how you've done that in a very difficult market situation. So maybe to start off, I wanna ask the crowd, so who in here themselves is a builder? Who is a founder? Who is building a project? Who is doing something? Okay, interesting. And who is already launched? Who's already live with the project? Okay, everyone here? Kind of. Okay, I got you, I got you. So when we launched Grizzify, there was a huge discussion, so okay, should we go live with what we have now? Should we wait a little bit? The market, oh, the winter, energy crisis, is Bitcoin going to fall more? No one really knows. So we just took uh, like matters in our own hands. We just did it and we kind of had success with it and we really want to share this with you guys. We want to show you what we learned, what we have done right, maybe what we shouldn't have done, some mistakes from our side. So I hope that you can really take some, some benefit out of it. And um, what's also very funny, one year ago it was only an idea or a concept on a paper. So we were sitting here uh, one year ago in October and we're like listening to all this presentation and we had the dream also to stand here in front of you guys and um, talk about our success and our experience. So it's a real pleasure and we are really proud to be here. Give me one second, I need the, I need the clicker. I need the ah, clicker, yeah. wait. Thank you. Okay, let's go. How does it work? Ah, okay. So I guess everyone is familiar with that. We are now in a very awkward position. I can remember like 2018, like right after the big 2017 rally, people were not really sure what's gonna happen. And as we see here, the, the red, red uh, circle in the beginning, we had one more flush. So Bitcoin went down to three, six K, and it kind of looks unfortunately like this is going to happen again. So people are very scared. Um, exactly, so um, here as well, falling valuation. I don't have to talk about this. It's just painful. Okay. Because what's also really funny, we had the idea in the bull market and our, our idea in the, in the head or um, our, I think, mission was to educate people on, um, uh, um, our idea was to educate people to be prepared for the next bear market because we are like since 2016, 17 um, in this, in this in this blockchain space and we have seen it all. So in our head was like, all right, we have to prepare the people and have to build a solution where people are like not losing money. So this is why then everything came different as we expected. We came into the bear market and then it was the late. time to prove ourselves <laughs> <laughs> that the product is really um, like function in the bear market. So really quickly, who knows what Grizzify is? Hands up. Who knows about it already? Okay, so there are some guys that don't. So really, really quickly, what is Grizzify? Grizzify is a DeFi protocol. We are focusing on making DeFi more accessible to everyone. I know there is a lot of projects that try to aim uh, to do this, but we do it in a different way. We want to combine all the already existing protocols, make them easier, make them unified, and make them accessible through like branding, 
through a story and also through like a clean user experience. That's our goal. So you, you will see we are a very different type of crypto company. We have like a cameraman here. We're very big on social media. We try to show ourselves. We try to be uh, relatable. So on our platform, what you basically can do, you can deposit your, your assets and you can do liquidity mining with them. So you can start earning an income on your existing cryptocurrencies, which we feel like is the future of banking. So instead of just having your cryptocurrencies sitting around, doing nothing at all, like just dusting uh, in, in front of your eyes, you actually send your cryptocurrency to work and you earn a residual and passive income on your existing cryptocurrency. So that's basically everything you need to know about Rizify. And now we can show you a quick video. Yeah with which platform or product we started because our goal was to combine all big DeFi areas and we started with liquidity mining and we made it easy as you can see in the following video. So let's see if we can get the video, yes. As a crypto investor, you are aware of the cycles of the crypto market and you try to time them the best possible way. Sometimes you get it right and win, sometimes you don't and lose. With Grizzly, you are able to create passive cash flow in any market situation, whether in a bull market or the upcoming bear market. But how exactly is the cash flow generated? As a liquidity miner, you provide liquidity to a decentralized exchange. This liquidity is used when someone wants to exchange one currency for another. The exchange fees, which are paid by the one exchanging, go directly to you, the liquidity miner, as a reward. But there are some stepping stones attached to liquidity mining. First, many platforms have complicated onboarding processes, which make it really hard for beginners to get started. Second, there are some risks attached to it, which can eat up the possible gains. And third, it can be time consuming to maximize the profits. Those stepping stones hinder the technology from being widely adapted. Grizzly is a hub for liquidity mining, where liquidity mining is made easier, safer, and more profitable than ever. No more need to manage dozens of different platforms and perform complicated steps to enjoy the benefits of liquidity mining. With the one-click invest, Grizzly.fi introduces the most simple and straightforward onboarding ever. Participating is as easy as setting up a new iPhone. And with the friendly design and clean overview, you are always in control. How do you explain something difficult best? Through an analogy which puts the technical terms in a new perspective. You are a Grizzly. With no natural enemies, you are relaxed and ready to invest. The bees, the smart contract of Grizzly.fi, are your assistants. They do all the heavy work for you. They take your cryptos to the hive and assure that honey, money, is made. The Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, ETH Zurich, published a paper about liquidity mining. They found out that the average miner makes around 0% gains at the end of the year, due to impermanent loss. This happens when one of the currencies in a pool loses value compared to the other. What their studies have shown is that mining with stablecoin pairs is the safest and, generally speaking, the most profitable way to generate a steady income out of liquidity mining. Grizzly.fi has put their studies at the core of their business and eliminated this risk for you. Like Warren Buffett said, rule number one, never lose money. As a liquidity aggregator, Grizzly acts as a hub on top of existing platforms. This means you don't invest in Grizzly.fi, but you invest through Grizzly.fi. Your bees collect the rewards for you and automatically reinvest them daily into your hives, resulting in much higher rewards. This incentivizes other liquidity miners to move their funds to Grizzly, boosting the value of everyone that participates. Additionally, you benefit from receiving honey tokens, which increase in value as the platform is more used. So all in all, Grizzly.fi brings liquidity mining to the people by making it much easier, safer, and more profitable. Earn money in every market. Visit grizzly.fi for more information and start today. Awesome. Man, I love this video. I've seen it like a hundred times, but I love it. Every time I watch it, I, investor, I uh, feel happy. The cycles of the crypto market. So you very quickly, I don't need to talk a lot about us. So we are a very diversified team. That's like the first step of launching a successful product. So a lot of people, they don't really care about the team. They just get together with some friends, okay, and let's go. It's really important that you have at least one technical guy in the team that can really talk to the developers, and so you're not reliable on outsourcing everything. Because if you don't have anyone in your team that you can trust, that has shares, and that really has its is invested basically into the company and that doesn't understand tech, it's hard. It's going to be really, really hard. So that's the first thing. And in our case, we have three techies. I mean, we have Andres, we have Leon, 
We have also Roman. Roman has an own app developer company with 65 employees. So we, we started with three techies and um, me and Oli and Elias, we are from the business side. So I think it's a perfect combination. Also, when you think about to launch your own um, or own um, company, yeah. think about diversification because otherwise you have to buy it in. All right. So very quickly, uh, we don't, you know, we are Swiss. We don't really like to talk about success. So we go through it very quickly. We had the biggest on-chain launch on the Binance Smart Chain in the history, even though it was in the de deepest bear market or still in the deepest bear market. So we had a very unique launch mechanism, which I guess will be very interesting to some of you guys to learn about in, in, a, in more detail. It's like our secret sauce, how we did it. And with this mechanism, we managed to raise $26 million in 72 hours. Everything fully decentralized, fully non-custodial, which is also very nice on the regulating side because uh, yeah, centralization and ICOs, uh, some countries really don't like that. Um, that's the first thing. The Honey token is still one of the most traded tokens on the Binance Smart Chain daily. We have daily volumes of five to $10 million every day. So you see that the platform is actually being used and the last thing is we actually launched a second protocol just 48 days after, which uh, is going to um, support the whole ecosystem. But we're going to get into details uh, later. Oh man, I hate this, this thing ah, yeah, now. Ah, there is even more. Okay, so we ranked on DevRadar all these listing platforms. Uh, it was really nice. We have a combined total value locked of $100 million. Again, in a bear market, this is really, really awesome. I could never imagine that uh, it, it, it went like this. So it was really, really cool. Um, and also, and I think what's also really outstanding is we have over 150 videos in three languages or even more languages about Grizzly. And um, I think until some weeks ago, we didn't pay anyone. So later we will talk about how to do this, how to manage this. Um, but this gave us a big, big leverage because people sometimes come to us and say, hey, I see Grizzly everywhere. I get ads, I go on YouTube, see Grizzly. I go on events, I see Grizzly. I talk to people, I see Grizzly. And this is our secret sauce, which we are going to talk later about. Yeah. Also, I guess the biggest achievement that we had was not really the race, but it was more the, the marketing thing that we did. So in general, in total, we collected 800,000 leads in about three months. So we had this campaign open for like six, seven months. In the last two months, there were like 500, 600,000 leads. And uh, we're also going to share with you how we did that. Okay. And I think before we talk about our secret sauce and how Grizzlyfy did this and what like hints we can give you for your project, I think Andres can tell you something about DeFi because I mean, you see so many projects here and the most of them are in the metaverse, are NFTs, but we decided to pick DeFi because DeFi is in our eyes the best um, area in the in the crypto space right now with the most value but I think Andres can tell you I'm more gonna, about it. I'm going to make it very short because I'm sure you guys are nervous you want the secret sauce so very quickly uh, who, who is familiar with DeFi who knows about it who uses DeFi okay less hands and who is like invested and who is like building in DeFi Okay, interesting, cool. So very, very quickly, we feel like DeFi is the future. We feel like DeFi is the logical next step for crypto. I mean, crypto started as a finance product, right? All these NFTs and metaverse things came later. Obviously, it's also very important and a really, really big part. But what we love about DeFi is that it's, it's, it's like building Legos. So when someone, when, when a company builds a new protocol, you can just go, go ahead, jump on it and build on top of it. So it's a very, very collaborative ecosystem. And we feel like um, a lot of people, everyone talks about like non-bankable people or, or people who don't have a bank account. This is going to change a lot. So we, we believe that through simplicity and through ease of use, we can drive all this De DeFi innovation forward. So that's, that's everything I guess you need to know about why we, we pick DeFi. So, how did we do it? I guess the first part we already mentioned, team, very important, 
need a few techies in your, in your team that really understand because in the end, you are in the technology sector. This is not business, this is not, you know, this is technology at the end. At the core, it's, it's technology. So you need at least one guy who is in this field, who knows about the tech, who can really also guide developers and tell the developers, hey guys, that's trash what you're building, and knows this before. We have seen so many projects which have got totally wrecked because they hired some outsourcing agency and they were like, yeah, yeah, everything is fine, ah, all good, we're, we're moving, progress, progress, and you don't understand it. You're like, ah, yeah, 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 he's a good guy, I know the guy, he would never lie to me. And then finally, due date is coming and the product is shit. And you need to be in control of that. So that's why you really need a tech guy in the team. It's getting worse when you like communicating the deadlines yeah. and because, <laughs> because of external partners, you yeah. can like make them. And what it's also really interesting, we are six co-founders and everyone, really exceptional, everyone told us, guys, it's going to be awful because it's too many people, like too many cooks can, uh, can make the soup bad, right? But in our case, we had six people really dedicated. And I think our learning or my learning was better to launch with more people or to found with more people because it's really hard to find employees who are dedicated as a founder. Yeah. And every one of us, like six people are working day and night, one and a half years. And better to divide the cake in more pieces than to be greedy or like you have this saying um, alone you can go fast but um, together you can go further so we really learned it that it's better to have more people on board who are dedicated yeah. so when you look at the product I guess that's the biggest thing so what are you actually building what are you trying to do and you really need to make sure that your product is building value so we had so many ideas before we started. Ah, should we do this? Ah, no. Should we do that? Mm. Should we do this? And we did a lot of research to make sure that there is no one out there that does what you want to do better. Because if there is already someone that does it better, why should you even try, right? Why should you even, yeah, like, wh why should you even invest time and money into it? If you know that you can do it better, go for it. That's really, really important. Because we see so many projects out there, and you look at them, you're like, yeah, I mean, how are you different to this? How are you different to that? What differentiates you there? And they can't really answer you. You know, ah, oh, yeah, we're better and, uh, you know. So really make sure that you build something that you can actually bring value to the market. Because the market, in the end, is who decides if they want to invest in you or in someone else. So make sure to look at that. And also, the first priority has to be value. Because there are so many people out there and so many projects who wants to make a quick buck to earn a lot of money, but money is a consequence. We have so much fun creating and bringing value because Grizzly also, maybe I can, we can share two, three uh, sentences about how Grizzly has been created because um, one and a half years ago, we started with DeFi and we saw it was so hard. And I mean, when you, when you want to use, for example, Curve or also PancakeSwap, man, that's crazy when you're a beginner, you have to have MetaMask, buy both pairs, stake it, LP tokens, switch networks, switch, I don't know, websites, and it's so hard. And we had this thought, why didn't anyone do it like, did it really easy? And so we had this Apple moment, because back then, Apple made the internet more accessible through their products. And we thought, hey, let's do the same with blockchain or DeFi to make it more accessible and more easy to use. So we saw a problem. And when you take a look at Grizzly, app.grizzly.fi, this is our platform, then you see we improved everything we wanted to improve back then when we started with liquidity mining or DeFi. So it's, it's really from a problem. And we wanted to make the space more efficient and better and easy to use. So this is how Grizzlyfy came, came alive, basically. Yeah, so we were very lucky that we had, or every time you start a business, you're solving a problem, right? So we were very lucky that this was like the biggest problem that we had. We spent so much time using these platforms. We said, this can be done easier. Everyone can save a lot of time. So that's why we did it. Also. When you do, when, when, when you launch a project in, in, in crypto, so crypto has a lot of kind of 
Ponzi mechanics, right? So it, it works when, when everyone gets in, it doesn't when people get out. So now you see in DeFi especially, you see the revolution of real yield. So when you do a project, be it a, a NFT project, a metaverse project, or a DeFi project, whatever, try to focus on building a product that people want to pay money for. And they don't just want to pay money for a token or an NFT that they think, oh, some idiot is going to buy it for a higher price later. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna work, especially now in rough times, because people are scared. People don't want to invest because people think, oh, maybe, no, not everyone wants to invest now, so why should I buy an NFT? Why should I now buy a token? Yeah. So really focus on generating revenue. That's very, 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 very interesting. If you cannot generate revenue with your project, now in a bear market, you're not going to succeed on the long run. So please make sure to focus on revenue generating. And what's also funny, we always thought that in the bear market, no one wants to invest and people don't have money. But it's completely false because I think people even have more money because they didn't spend it the last years. And I think people are like very conscious about their investments and they're like really, really like searching for a, for a project where they are not afraid to lose money again. So I think we can, we can um, talk in the, in the next slides about how to build trust, yeah. because this is the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. Wait. Okay, that's the one. We have a little bit of a mixer, but it's fine. So the biggest reason why we, because I was saying, okay, people don't want to invest in a bear market, all good. But still, we had the biggest on-chain launch ever in the history of, uh, of the Binance Smart Chain. So what was different? And we feel like the big, big part of what, what went well was the marketing. Because as Grigori said, people are very picky. Because think, think back, when, uh, when, you, when, when you were investing in like 2021, 2022, some guy sends you a link and you invest. Ah, oh, I don't care what it is, I just invest. And maybe you're lucky, maybe you're not, but now you're very, very careful, like, okay, let me read the white paper, let me check the team, oh, do they have an audit, but in a bull market, you don't care. So you really need to make sure that you build a marketing strategy that builds trust with your community. So you need a really strong, strong relationship. So what we have done is we focus on our na native speaking uh, countries, right? So we are German, uh, or we're Swiss, but we speak German, and, um, we started producing content in German, right? People might say, okay, German, okay. 100 million people speaking German, that's like not very interesting. But still, we managed to build, I can say like most of, the, of these 26 million came from German speaking countries, about 70%. Now imagine, 20 million dollars coming from German speaking countries, insane, that's crazy. That's like as if every single guy in the world that speaks German invent, invested 20 cents. It's crazy if you think about it. So focus on building trust by talking the language of your country. If you are from a country where, like, let's say Portugal, for example, don't be afraid to start your marketing in Portuguese because people look at, look at you and they're like, okay, wow, that's a guy, for, that's, that's, a, that's my brother, you know? That's, he's from my country. He's, he went through the same struggles. He's, he's, he, he could have, it, it could be me, right? So you start building a deep connection with these people. So don't be afraid to start with, with, with advertising in your own country because everyone is focused, oh, I need to go to Asia, oh, English, I need to go to whatever. Countries, they have no clue. They don't know the culture, they, know the, they don't know the language, they have no clue. So start in a country where you feel comfortable with. And I think also what builds a lot of trust is to be transparent and to be present because, I mean, Tell me maybe five DeFi projects where you know the faces from. It's very difficult because when we started, we wanted to reach out to this project and we didn't find anyone. The people are hiding. And I mean, I understand also why, because it's very, very dangerous. I mean, when the market drops, when your coin drops, when a hack or exploits happen, then you are like the silly guy where people are coming to the house and like, are angry, right? So we had the choice and we choose to go out with our faces and build trust and be present and be everywhere because people don't buy products, people buy people and visions. So we have to bring this vision 
um, to the people by telling them, by speaking to them. And they have to see us and they have to identify with us. And we are so many people, someone always can identify to someone. We have nerds, we have like Oli who's running at a suit the whole day, he's sleeping in it. So, I mean, we have everyone you can relate to. And um, I think this tra 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 transparency, everyone said this was also like the, the secret sauce yeah. because we took the people on an adventure, yeah. on an adventure to start an own business, to make an own project. And we documented every step, like really. And the people are, have the feeling, and this is crazy, the people have the feeling that it's their own project. Yeah. Really, they're like, they're, when, when someone happens or someone makes a, maybe a critical video about us, they're like flipping out, they're going crazy <laughs> because they're like, how can you say, uh, speak bad about my project? Yeah. So it's crazy and this is one maybe ingredient of the secret sauce. Yeah. So when you break it down, like when you want to be very, very specific, we wrote it down. So be clear when communicating your goals. We go to so many, like so many people reach out to us, send us their project, they're like, hey, can you have a look? In the first five seconds, I wanna know what you're doing, right? There are so many websites, they speak about whatever, decentralization, and you have no clue what the hell they're doing. You're like, what are you doing? I don't have the whole day to go through your whole website to understand what you're doing, so be very clear about what you're doing. That's why we are very illustrative, so we have like silly animations and stuff, so even, little kids, they understand what we are doing, right? So focus on that, and we learned it now. You build a community, sometimes you wonder like, oh, there are people in, 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 in the community, you're like, oh, like stupid, you know? Like they don't really understand it, so you really need to make it very, very, e as easy as possible, so you can really explain it to a five-year-old, because everyone is saying, yeah, yeah, make it easy so, you, so your five-year-old can understand it, but really focus on that. It's very, very, very important, and not too many projects do that. And also, our target group was like beginners, yeah. and we are really proud to say that I think maybe over 50% of our whole community, mm -hmm. especially from the German-speaking part, it was their first project. Yeah. And I mean, who lost money on their first investment? I did, and on the second, and on the third. <laughs> so we are really proud to say that people earned money in their first project where they invested from, because you know, it's really hard when you trust someone, you lose money, and then you're like, you don't want to deal anymore with this. And now people are there like building trust, and they're like seeing good in the space. And this is what we wanted to do, because the space is so cool, and has so much value, but there are so many projects and people outside who are destroying the trust of the people. And we wanted really to restore it. And we are really lucky and proud that we could make it. Yeah. So, quick question here. Who knows Gary Vee? Okay, I love this guy. I'm a big, big fan. And we also incorporated a lot of his strategies into our project. So he's a, he's a content guy, right? If you know like, if you've seen five seconds of his, of his content, you know, he's pushing, pushing, pushing. You need to produce content, talk about what you're doing. And that's exactly what we did. Like when other projects, they do like an update, for example, a weekly update. How do most of them do it? They send a telegram, a huge telegram message that no one really wants to read. You see emojis and stuff. It's cool structured, but no one cares about it, right? Or what we do. What or an AMA where someone sits in their like living room and speaks to the people with bad light and a bad camera. I mean, how can you build trust when people can see you, right? And don't have the feeling that you are like near to them. So we have like an own studio, we have a green wall. Every video which we take is with Grizzly behind us. And I mean, regarding Gary Vee, this is our videographer and he's following us every step, is filming us because later on in the evening he's like, um, seeing all this, all this material and taking out reels. And every day is coming a new reel of us being, talking to people and sometimes, for example, yesterday we have been on an event and Brian Rose from London Reel has been there. I was taking him, making an interview with him and he's, he was filming it. So another content, you know? So this is why you have to be always present and the content machine because this is how people like 
going to trust you. Yeah. So to quickly come back about this update thing, I guess that's that was a really, really big part of what we did right. Again, people do these Telegram messages and stuff uh, to update the community. Hey, development is going great, blah, blah, blah. New exchange listing coming very soon. What we do, what we do is we take our, our, our smartphone like this, and we do a video, like, hey guys, look, we're doing this, development is going great, we're doing this, 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 and people relate to you. You're a human. Finally, there is a human in this blockchain space building something, not a robot, right? Not a Telegram bot, not a Twitter account posting stuff. Be transparent, show your face. Don't you know, be scared. I mean, yeah. we're not the most beautiful guys out there, but we still do it, you know? <laughs> just, 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 um, just do it. Just go out and, uh, and record content and be transparent about what you do. It's very important and also the ads when we when we make ads it's also with a video or it's like very naturally because i mean otherwise it's just like everyone is doing it but when you do it really naturally it's like a friend talking to you or someone you know and you can feel related so it's i think everything is really psychological yeah. so if you like dealing a bit with this and also um, with, with, with all the stuff, how, how people can build relationships, um, in which scenarios, like you coming further to create a really strong community. And don't be scared to be yourself. Maybe you, you see it now, or maybe you feel the energy, but I don't really care about what, what you guys think about me, right? I just say whatever I think. Maybe I, I use a swear word uh, every now and then, you know? Yeah. We don't really care. You have, to be, you have to be yourself. We had a lot of discussions, I, actually. I'm like the compliance quiz. <laughs> I, I have to, like, oh, don't say this, cut it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but now, now everyone of us, and this is also a very good like, hint for you, um, create characters. Because every one of us is re really different. And um, Andres is different, and he has his own like um, content. I have my own content. And we are like going to be not grizzly, but we are real people. And people follow people. So then they're coming to grizzly and see, oh, they have a cool product. So we are trying also to inspire people. Because we are, we are not special. We are not from a rich family or from a um, entrepreneur family or something like that. We are like also like users of, of the crypto space um, and we just started and this is why we're not special. We are like everyone else, I think. When we can make it, everyone can make it. Yeah, definitely. So let me quickly check if we don't forget point. anything. The yes. last point. So when we were talking before, I was mentioning this uh, 800,000 uh, leads machine, right? So um, maybe quickly what we did. So. We set up a giveaway, so uh, shout outs to Stan in the back and Elias, the, the guy in the white and the guy in the black shirt, our marketing guys. They had this great idea to uh, start a giveaway. So uh, you think now, okay, giveaway, that doesn't sound like very interesting. Everyone does a giveaway, but we did it in a little bit of a different way. So we used a platform and if you want to know the name of the platform, you can come to us and ask us, we can give it to you guys. So this platform um, is um, very special. You can create tasks there. So you can say, okay, you want to win something? Give us your email address. Good, step one. They go to the next page. Ah, okay, you follow us on YouTube, you get two points. You follow us on Twitter, you get two more. It's you like a lottery. Exactly, you, you refer a friend, you get five points more. And then there is like a leaderboard. So everyone knows where am I? Am I like number one, number 10, number 100, number 1,000? And we say, okay, randomly, 100 people are going to win a huge prize. And if you're launching a token, you can allocate a, a quite nice amount to this giveaway. And you can give it to them because it really needs to be something aspirable. So with us, our giveaway, believe it or not, we, we, we gave away, how much was it? Like three, I, two, two and a half million dollars. Uh, no, I think more because it was the biggest giveaway in the crypto history. Yeah, because to our token just like skyrocketed. We didn't expect that. So the giveaway was then, yeah. I don't know the exactly uh, number, but it was over two or three million in a giveaway. Yeah, because we, we raffled it out when the token was at the peak. And that, at that moment, we raffled uh, 10,000 tokens worth 200 and something dollars, or even 300, I don't remember, um, 300 actually. And uh, so it was a $3 million giveaway. 100 people win, so everyone wins a small car. $30,000 just for referring friends, just for uh, liking a YouTube video. And you can update these tasks. You can say, okay, we're listing on CoinMarketCap. Go and like that. 
So you, you build yourself an army of people and they do it because you, they like you, but also they do it because they're also selfish and they want to win this giveaway, right? Yeah. And so people love stuff for free. They love it. Yeah. They really, really, they will do everything. So we, like, uh, shortly before the giveaway ended, we had times we got 10,000 followers a day, 10,000 the next, 10,000 the next, 5,000. It was insane. So really, really make sure to leverage such a technology um, and use the psychology of people because everyone likes to win something and especially when you have like something like a referral program, it can go viral very, very fast. And people love to talk about things they like and um, especially when they're invested. So incentivize this when, they're in, when they want to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's also a really, really big point in our, uh, in our success story was were the right partners and advisors. Because when we started, we knew no one from the space or from the DeFi space especially. It was so hard to find people. And um, yeah, we made a lot of experience now. And we have now one of the best partners and advisors in the space. We are really proud. And maybe I can give you some like experience or share with you some experience how we did this or what you should consider. Yeah, because advisors can be a big leverage, right? I mean, we mostly, mostly like, adv like founders are young. They're focused on tech. They're like uh, very busy with what they do. But it's always nice to have like an outside view that, hey, I know this guy, I know that guy, I can connect you with these guys. So um, yeah, Grigory can share how he got these advisors on board. Yes, because I mean, the most important thing is to start because I mean, when you go to advisors or to partners and you say, oh, I have an idea, but I don't know, can you help me? I mean, come on, that's not gonna work because these advisors, they have stuff to do and there are only advisors. I think also you have to fix your expectation because an advisor is not a founder, an advisor is not an employee. An advisor is only there to ask the right question and direct in the right way and maybe connect with the right people. So when you're searching for advisor, you have to have a fixed idea. Maybe you have already launched or already like put in, put in structure to everything, a construct, and then you can talk with them. And also it's very important to define what you need and what you want because in our case, we asked ourselves, okay, what is the most valuable thing in this space? And the most valuable thing is technology. So we focused on people from the technology space. And we were really lucky because um, in Zurich we have the university and we have find people who are doing their doctor, their diploma or are professors in the blockchain security space. And we convinced them to be our advisors. And um, one of our advisors, also Daniel Gretzke, he was at Inacta. This is the biggest um, consulting, blockchain consulting in Switzerland. Um, he decided to be our advisor. He's now the tech lead of Polygon, and he's still our advisor. But back then, he also gave us the idea for the launch strategy. Yeah. So we focused really on technology because, I mean, marketing you can buy or sales you can buy, but technology, I mean, it's hard to find good developers, it's hard yeah. to find people who understand the business logic. Yeah. So we focused on that and we made everything right. We're really happy about this. And um, also I think what's really important is be present on the socials, to be like social proof. Because, I mean, it's hard to find these people and you can only fight them through other people. And when you have like a good profile and people see who you are, they're like more likely to work with you. I think this is really, really important. And um, yeah, go to relevant places and events. I think all of you guys can ask us uh, afterwards and talk to us because we did the same. We were like really, really straightforward coming to people like, hey, let's talk about it, let's connect. And I think that's the most important thing in this space. So to quickly sum up, um, focus on or have an advisory roadmap. In the beginning, yeah. you want tech, right? When you don't have a product, you want a tech advisor, someone that can you can show the product to, hey, does it make sense? Maybe someone who can help you to step up the development environment, everything like boring tech stuff. You need someone who really knows about it. Security, please get a security advisor. The crypto space can be really dangerous, really harsh. 
There are big assholes out there that just want to steal your money, that want to harm you. So make sure to get a security advisor as well. And later you can focus on, okay, I need an advisor that can give me funds, that can uh, help me with fundraising, help me with marketing, all of these things. But first you need a tech advisor. So you have, need to have a roadmap. The second thing, which I had to learn, which was like the most difficult thing for me because I get excited very fast, you know? I meet a, per a person, I'm like, whoa, he's like the coolest guy ever, you know, we need to talk with him. You know, I get very excited very fast. So ex again, fix your expectations, make sure that you know, okay, it's just an advisor. He's not gonna run your business, he's not gonna, you know, move the world just for you, he's just an advisor. And also make sure to really define what, you, what you're looking for, because if you're giving a guy your valuable tokens, you also need to make sure that you're getting some value in exchange for that. And also, the first advisors, for example, Stan, he started as an advisor, and he's the craziest growth hacker I ever seen in my life. He's also responsible with Elias for this huge, huge lead generating machine. And he started as an advisor, is now a team member, and also Christian Killer, yeah. he, uh, he's doing his PhD in blockchain security. He started as an advisor, is a team member now, and he's doing everything, yeah. every deployment. He's like, you can call him anytime, 24 hours, and when the platform is down or something is happening, he's like ready. He's a poor guy, he always has his laptop with him. Like, you call him, he's in the car, okay, I will stop. No joke, he was once on a, on a motorway, on a highway, and he had to stop on like the, this small little line next to it to fix something on the website. So make sure to get good people also yeah, as advisors. Especially on, on, on security side, because we have now hundreds of million total value locked, and there are so many people outside who want to steal your funds and to attack you, so we, we are getting attacks every day on the website, on Telegram, on the smart contract, so you have to have good people. Yeah. So let's see, what's next? Okay, wow, okay, so the next thing is the launch strategy. So we told you guys we raised 26 million in 72 hours, and how did we do it? Um, first of all, we had to ask ourselves the question, how do we want to launch, right? So you have two very prominent ways how projects launch. You have the fair launch mechanism, which is like a lot of DAO and really, really nerdy DeFi projects. They do it like that. They do like they want to be fully decentralized and first come, first serve. Um, and most of the time, that's fine for those types of projects because they don't have strong marketing, right? So they can just deploy their smart contract, go live, and then it slowly, slowly starts to pick up, which is great. But we already had this lead generating machine uh, people in the telegram community were talking about sniper bots oh i have the best sniper bot you know people got scared so we were like oof we need to do something the second uh, way people launch is launch pads launch pads ieos all of that stuff it has its pros but also um, there you have the the issue that um, yeah you get a lot of people that you don't want you have people that constantly stay on these launch pad sites they're just looking for the next cash grab. Oh, I can invest in this token, get out again here, get out again. So you attract the wrong type of people. And we didn't really want to like uh, give benefits to people who are not in the community, right? I mean, we have built this community with, from the bottom of our heart, it was a lot of energy, a lot of ideas, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Um, and we wanna give them something. We wanna give them the best value possible. So we have chosen another way uh, of launching. So. Very quickly, how, how did we do it? Um, on a technical side, um, we basically wrote a sniper bot. So who doesn't know who, what a sniper bot is? Who doesn't? Okay, so a sniper bot is a piece of code that tracks the blockchain and just waits until it can buy, right? Because a, a computer is always faster than, than a human, right? As a human, you have to click, 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 and then you're in, and the sniper bot is just like, boom, in. So. What we did is we built a huge sniper bot for everyone. So it's a sniper bot that people can invest in. So they can invest their funds into this bot. And this is the place where in the end the $26 million landed. So they landed in, in this bot, in this smart contract. And um, we waited 72 hours. And what then happened was quite interesting. So we created a liquidity pool on uh, PancakeSwap, which is like the first place where people can, can buy and sell the tokens. So on a decentralized exchange, you always have to provide um, your token and something else so people can buy and sell again. And we created this pool and then 
this big sniper bot with the 26 million dollars in it went and bought into this pool and the token went skyrocket. So we provided about 500,000 into the initial pool um, and with 26 million uh, it would have been uh, or 26 million would have been uh, used to buy. Uh, if we would have done that the token would have went up to about the valuation of four billion dollars which is insane, so we didn't do that. We only took a small part of the money. Uh, we took a small part of the money, bought, and then we got a huge, huge amount of tokens back, right? Huge amount of tokens back. We took these tokens, paired them with the rest of the money, and provided liquidity back. So to this day, we still have $25 million of liquidity, which is just sitting there, owned by nobody. It's just for the protocol. So you have a huge issue with liquidity, right? And we solved it with that as well. So we used about three to four million dollars to buy on, on, on the market actually, and 21, 22 million to provide liquidity back, which makes it a lot, a lot easier now. So basically people bought the token with low liquidity, pumped the price, and then you provide liquidity back and you have like a, a very deep liquidity on a decentralized exchange. I know it's very complicated, very like uh, technical. So if you really are interested in, in how we did it, uh, you can just come up to us, uh, ask us, or you can reach out to us uh, on social media, Telegram, uh, Twitter, and so on. But that's just like a quick summary of, of how we did it, exactly. And also we created social proof because in this huge sniper bot, you could see every day how many people like investing and how much money is inside and we had high tickets people investing million from the first minute so other people got FOMO like all right this is working I'm also going to invest and when we closed it at 26 million after 70 hours in a second every second like thousands of dollars came flying in so I think when we would open it for like four or five days, we could collect it 50 million or even more yeah. because the people got really FOMO after like 20 million, 23, 25. The people are, went crazy. I guess, so I, I guess one thing that's also important for you guys to know is the, the big promise that was made in this, in this sale was that you invest $1, you're going to get $3 back. So how, how could this happen? So um, when, you, when you buy on a decentralized exchange, you always have slippage, right? So you, you, you buy and you move the price. So when you have a lot of money, you're moving the price exponentially in, in, in the right direction. So if we didn't make this split up between we buy and we provide liquidity, people would have gotten like a thousand five hundred X or something, like insane. Like they invest one dollar, they get 1.5 K back. That's why we did this second, uh, second round where we provided liquidity back. And people invested $1 and got $3 back. This is also one thing we would change, to be honest. Maybe we would do only a 2x instead of a 3x, um, because you saw a huge run-up. The token launched at $200 or something, $150 million of market but cap. But technically, it launched at $0.50. Cent. So yeah, the yeah. token was from $0.50 cent to $300, and now it's around $60. Yeah, so, so, so in the bear market. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the token, as he said, launched at $0.50 cents with like our initial liquidity that we provided. Then we bought, right? The token shot up to uh, $200 approximately, and the average price that people got was about $68. So everyone made a 3x. The token went up skyrocket to $300. We didn't understand what was happening. Everyone just wanted to buy this token as well. Um, and then now it, it corrected down again, so now we're approximately again at the entry level of the people. So about $60, $68, so now it's, a, it's been a healthy correction and we can now start to move back up higher. And what's really funny, when people are trusting the project, they are not only invest, they are going to like freeze it as well. Because we offered the people to freeze the token afterwards to get a higher APY. And now I think we have a supply of 700,000 tokens. I think 320,000 tokens are freezed. So like over 20 million or 24 million in dollars is freezed from a market cap of over 50 million. And this is crazy for half a year. And this is, this is we are really proud of this, that people trust us so much that like almost the half of the tokens are freezed. 
Yeah, so let's see what, are, what have been like big challenges. Um, I guess finding right employees is always hard, especially when you get excited about everyone you meet and you're like, oh, so you want to hire them. In the end, you find out, oh, it's not, he's not that great, you know. So be careful, right, be careful. Always also when you hire tech people, make sure that the tech guy does the interview because they can spot a bullshitter very, very fast. And you might not, he, he will say, fancy words, you'll be like, oh yeah, that sounds smart, and you hire him, but in the end, he has no clue. So really make sure that uh, a tech guy interviews tech people to hire. And this is crazy, there are agencies outside who are like focusing on scamming you, because they're just regular people who learned a little bit about DeFi, and in the first interview, they're like, you think they have an idea what they're talking about, and then you employ them, they work one month, but they don't do anything, and then you're like, what the, what the heck has happened here? Then you like fire him, but he made this one month. Yeah. And this is their business model. Yeah. So this is why uh, every interview, um, we had like technical people and this w these interviews were the most awful one in my life or in his life, because when they ask like direct technical question, the other people, they're like, got him really like, oh, yeah. fuck, I'm like, now, now I'm, uh, like they know about yeah. my, my, my plans to scam you. Yeah. So be really careful and because we had such problems to find good developers, we have founded an own like agency. Um, it's called Block Lancers. Um, it's like Fiverr or uh, freelancers where we are like finding the right developers and um, give it, it to, to a good project. Um, and it's also successful. It's like a side project and we created it also like from a problem that it was hard to find good developers. Yeah, so really focus on quality. I mean, everyone is saying, oh, it's so hard to find these devs. It is hard, but uh, don't uh, do the compromise with quality. Always focus on quality, really, because when you find good people, make sure to keep them, but make sure to find like high quality ones. Um, that's one thing. Security, of course, uh, we were very lucky with our security advisors. So not every project has like a crypto security PhD guy in the team who can support it, who uh, works as if it's his own project. So um, yeah, make sure to not only get audits because we also um, made the experience that some audit companies, I don't want to say any names, um, are not really focusing on really checking the contract. It's more about, okay, who has what stamp? You, in the end, it's marketing. Most audits is marketing. So make sure to also work with uh, white hat, white hat uh, hackers, for example. Uh, we, have a, a <laughs> we have an army of like crazy Russian hackers, like as, I as you imagine like sitting somewhere in their basement, uh, hacking, hacking other companies. We give them the contract, uh, multiple of these guys, they check it and they really check it for security because they don't care. They're, you don't get a report, right? You don't get like a fancy logo, they don't have a fancy website, they don't do marketing, they just care about security. So make sure to do that, especially when you're in DeFi, you don't want to be responsible for other people losing money. And also, the, the, I think the biggest problem is not the security of the smart contract, but uh, it's the business logic, because this is why the most exploits happen. Yeah. And um, you need people who are focusing on business logic, who understand everything, and also like minting tokens. Because, I mean, every good project which we know uh, was like hacked or exploited. So really find people, because when you do an audit, they don't look at the business logic. They're, they only look at the smart contract and it can be secured, but yeah. when like the, the interfaces and also the logic is not like well thought, thought through, I think then you have a problem. I think a good pr comparison is that an auditor checks the house from the outside, like how does it look like? Oh, the wall, oh, there is a small crack there, you know, but the auditor doesn't really go inside most of the time. Of course, there are good auditors as well. You need to get an auditor that really goes inside, checks the cables, checks everything, so to really make sure that um, yeah, everything is working. Because when you talk about, okay, business logic fails, it's as if the door was, uh, was um, put on, on the wrong side. You know, like things that you don't see from the outside, you only see when you actually go into the house, open the doors, and really use the, the protocol, very important. Um, the other thing is uh, handling a big community. I mean, 
that was one of the things that made us successful, building a big community and uh, having people in there 24 seven who are not just like, uh, you don't just hire like uh, micro workers, like uh, guys, you, you pay 50 euros uh, a, a day or, or no, not a day, but you pay 50 euros a, a month that, that are in the community texting with people. You also need the high quality people, like some of the founders, some of the core team that are constantly monitoring the chat. I know everyone thinks, oh yeah, uh, my time is too valuable, I cannot check the chat all the time, but that's where you get the feedback. That's where people complain, that's where people um, celebrate, that's where people talk about new ideas. And if you are not in there, you have no idea what's happening and the community is most important thing ever. So make sure to have people in there. Also take some time out of your day. Check the messages, check who's texting there, check the problems. You might like touch your hand and think like, oh man, these, these stupid questions. But they are important because those are the guys. If you convince them, if you convince also the critics, right? We had so many critics doing whole YouTube videos about us, like 50 minutes, like going through everything, like, oh, this, 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 this. You also learn, hey, where am I not clear enough? Where have I made a mistake maybe, you know? And really approach them. And I can tell you, I can tell you so many scenarios where we had a big hater, a big critic. Now he's the biggest supporter. The yeah. biggest critics always become the biggest supporters. So keep that in mind. It's very exhausting, but you have to do it. What else? Yeah, and I think meeting the deadlines. Yeah. This is also like a very, very tough one because no one from us was from the software development. And I mean, in the software development, you can, yeah, you can be really frustrated yeah, because if it, things if, doesn't work. If the software. developer says one month, it's going to take two months. Just calculate with that. Or the, the deployment is going to be at 1 p.m. and then <laughs> <laughs> it takes maybe four hours more, but the community yeah. is waiting and making pressure on you. So I think we learned a lot. Yeah, make sure to like have appropriate deadlines. That's really important, especially when you communicate them. So uh, disagreements in the team. I mean, when you look at the statistics, there are more businesses failing because of disagreements in the team than like with any, any other thing. So make sure to be nice to each other, make sure to also be, be open. Everyone, I mean, especially when you're a big team, there are disagreements, 100%. It, it cannot only be roses and, uh, and nice, you know, you cannot only always love yourself or love each other. So there will come times where you have disagreements, but always make sure to be respectful and to approach this thing from a very, make sure that you think it's important because it is, it is very important. Yeah, and also like unstable market situation because this is the reason why the most projects don't want to launch. But in our head it was different because when we launched, we didn't have any, anyone launching. So the whole focus was on us. And this was a big, big benefit. Now, afterwards, you can say it. And uh, as I mentioned before, to be able to launch in such um, like harsh conditions, You need to make sure to have a business model, you need to make sure to, that you make revenue, and you need to make sure that you don't need money. Because when you need money, uh, you start to approach shady people, like people come up to you, especially, I mean, Dubai is the place, you know, you have a lot of people that, that do this, you know, everyone knows and, and everyone uh, can talk very much. So make sure that you are funded and that you have a revenue generating model, very, very important. And I think what's also important to be flexible with everything because you get a lot of feedback from the community, from the market, from everyone, and you have to listen to it. And um, sometimes you have to stop being stubborn because maybe in your head you think you're right, but the market gives you another feedback or the community, so you have to follow the people or the, like, the, 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 the situation who is like going to lead you to success because they are buying your product. They are deciding if you are successful or not. Um, put your ego down and also like be transparent about failures because we also make made like mistakes and we said it to the community sorry we have now reconsidered it and we are doing it different now and people love it and I think that was the biggest learning to like put the ego down and not think that you are always right and like listen very carefully Definitely. so That's uh, most of the inputs that we have. We would really love to show you a little bit 
what we have built, what we have done. Just a quick uh, showdown, what have we done in the past couple of days, uh, past couple of months, actually. Um, as you can see, this is the Glorisify ecosystem. Our biggest uh, advantages to other DeFi projects is that you have a very easy way to invest. Um, you have optimized returns with auto compounding, very interesting tokenomics. So if you're a little bit of a tokenomics nerd like I am, you will love the Git book, uh, docs.grizzy.fi. Um, also, we're aiming to be the hub, right? Um, so you have hundreds of different platforms coming out every single day and we're trying to combine everything under one belt, unifying the investment process and making sure that people who people don't need to learn new things, right? So they can always stay with us, they can trust us, they can work with us, they can invest with us and they can they, they don't need to go to, to anyone else. That's very important. So what else? Exactly. This is the, the big the big headline that everyone is talking about, the twenty six million in seventy two hours. This is how the platform looks like, so it's a very unique design. We try to be very playful again, because when you, when you look at existing crypto projects, they always look a little bit intimidating, right? You have the numbers and the graphs and all of these things, so we're trying to take out a little bit of pressure and uh, make it look like, like a game, right? And they look all the same, like a pancake swap copy, like a copy-paste, and we designed it from scratch completely. This is the freezer that Grigori was talking about. So um, it shows again that the community really trusts us, really is into us, and they believe in us long term. So over 50% of the total supply is frozen now for the next six months, which gives us also and gives the, the price, the, the, yeah, the valuations, yeah. a little bit of time to, to relax and to, to build, right? Sometimes you make fun that the token is a stable coin because it doesn't move much <laughs> but the, the volume is like five million a day but it doesn't move really yeah. and that's the other thing that we did so um, that's uh, in, in the beginning we were saying okay only 48 days after the initial Grizzify release we released uh, a second a second platform so um, our goal is to not only be able to be the easiest way of investing into DeFi, but also the most profitable one. And uh, one thing that we believe will be a huge driver of volume, transactions, and uh, total value lock will be leverage, right? So imagine when people can borrow money to invest into stable yield generating assets. So uh, things like you can yield farm USDC against USDT. They will not go up, they will not go down, they are stable. You will not get liquidated, right? So what if you leverage that 2, 3x? And to be able to leverage things, you need a stable coin. So what did we think? Okay, there is like hundreds of stable coins packed to the US dollars. We are Swiss, so what we built is we built the first fully decentralized platform with a stable coin packed to the Swiss franc. And this is going to be used as a leveraging driver in the Grizzify ecosystem. And besides that, I mean, the Swiss franc has proven itself time and time again to be the most secure and stable currency in the world. Now you have like problems with the US dollar. You may have uh, like uh, China flipping the US. You have a lot of uncertainty. Who knows what's going to happen in the next coming, coming years. But what we know for sure is that Switzerland is going to stay safe, stay neutral. And uh, that's why we also feel like this Swiss, um, Swiss franc stablecoin can also bring a lot of new opportunities to the space. So let me give you some impressions. And also this platform just launched two weeks ago and has already a total value locked over 40 million. So this is also a cool thing. We took the community from Grizzly and put it to the new platform and they got an airdrop from the platform token. So people, so we, when we started, we had immediately like a user base of thousands of people. And this is also a secret. When you build a successful project, the next project which you build, I mean, the people are going to love it. And when they made money in the first project, they are sure that they are also like trusting you with another project. And the thing here is uh, what's very interesting and what I feel like is very crazy is that here people deposit Bitcoin and Ethereum to the platform and mint the stablecoin, right? So they create the stablecoin and um, you have <laughs> we have like a thousand Bitcoins on there, 15,000 Ethereum which just lay there in this ecosystem waiting to be leveraged. So just, just to sum up because um, 
it's not re it's not really two different projects. I know the branding is different because we feel like the Swiss stablecoin can can be maybe bigger than Grizzly. We don't know. Um, and it would be weird to have like a Grizzly Swiss franc. So we said, okay, it's the DeFi franc, right? But the DeFi franc is very essential in the Grizzly ecosystem. It's going to be used as a leverage mechanism, as I said before. So. With the DeFi franc, with GrizzlyFi, people can borrow against uh, yield generating collateral um, and leverage yield farms. So this is going to be a huge volume and, uh, and leverage uh, factor here. Exactly, so what else do we have? Exactly, you can borrow as I said. And I guess that's it. We went through everything. Um, yeah, do you have any questions? I mean, we've talked now for Almost one and a half hours. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> congratulations and... Uh, <laughs> you made it. I, yeah, yeah, you made it. You made it. Uh, if you have any questions, maybe uh, feel free to raise your hands. Uh, we can give you a microphone if you want to ask something. Yes, now or later. Thanks to you. Very interesting talk. Very much value. Thanks a lot. It's also interesting for us to learn from you guys. I have one question. If you had to decide between meeting a deadline and meeting a quality standard. If you have to make this decision, you see, okay, it, something doesn't work, it's not like you expected it to be, and now how do you decide? Because we, we have followed the project and we know you also had to move a few deadlines that, that can happen. Um, do, you, do you regret that or would you say, okay, um, let's just move it again and meet the quality standard. I think that's an amazing question and we had the situation several times and I think what's very important is at the end your platform has to work and has to be secure and this is the highest, 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 highest priority. Yeah. So I think now in the end the best case what we are doing now and also did afterwards we learned is to be really, really like honest First, don't communicate deadlines, only give like approximate deadlines, like okay, this could be in this month, but don't, uh, please don't take it too like serious. Better quarter, like a month yeah. is already very specific. Yeah, <laughs> and then when you can't meet them, just be honest, because I mean, people know that we are not roboters and we are not perfect and we are communicating like this, like hey, we are like, we are just regular guys trying to build something like valuable. Yeah. Please not be not too 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 like uh, harsh to us. Yeah. Like try to give us the chance to to make something really good yeah. and help us with this. And uh, also, as a f as a founder, you always uh, know how the project is going to look in the end. So you're trying to make it as close as possible. And to be honest, we over engineered. We could have released like a year ago a very simpler version uh, and just be out, which maybe would have been better. We, now we don't know. Now we can stand here in front of you guys, talk about the successful launch. It was great, right? But maybe if I would do something different, I would focus on releasing the minimum viable product. Don't try to build the product that it will, that, that it has to become in a year. Give yourself time and also give the community time to test it out, to start from the ground up, right? I mean, it's also cool for people to know that, hey, I've been using this project since like, it didn't have this feature, it didn't have that, it didn't have that. Give people something they can work with yep. and um, don't try to release the final product. So make sure it's secure, make sure it works, make sure it doesn't have too many bugs and go out. And better done than perfect. Exactly. Yes. So other questions? Yes, tell me, where do you think Grizzly.fi is going to be in two years from now? Where are you going to be? How is the market going to evolve? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I mean, we hope that the market will recover. We hope that uh, in two years, maybe times will look better. Um, so in the meantime, we relax, we build, you know, we don't care about uh, all the crazies. We don't do a lot of pressure on us. We just build, we focus, we lock ourselves in the, in the office. I mean, at least when we're not in Dubai, we lock ourselves in the office and just build, 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 build. And the goal here is to build the easiest, most reliable and most profitable DeFi platform out there. We are now also in contact with institutions. So obviously, Grizzify is a retail product. 
but uh, we really believe in institutional investors since we are from Switzerland, the, the country of banking, the country of finance. Um, we aim to, to create a liquidity mining ETP and allow institutions to invest into decentralized finance. And also what we are doing, we just go further and further and we are building. And I mean, no one knows what's going to be in one year, in two years, because I mean, the innovations, they are coming so fast. And we are really flexible. We have so many resources, good developers, good designers, and we can react really quickly to the market. If someone invents something really good, really nice, we make sure that we copy it and make it more easy and accessible and more fun to use. So this is also learning. You don't have to invent a wheel again. You just have to improve everything what's already there. And this is already a huge adventure and um, can get a lot of like impact to the space. So ladies and gentlemen, we've got five or 10 minutes left before the next presentation. Any other questions? We have some questions at the back, Abdo. Hey, hi. So uh, a very beautiful presentation. I just want to know like how exactly as a customer point of view, as a user, when I'm going to invest on your platform, what is the benefit I would be getting? And uh, secondly, which blockchain you are exactly forking here? Any kind of infra you are using where a person can trust because there are typical EVM based chains. Let's say Polygon, Binance, and Avalanche, all those blockchains where I have more trust. Why should I trust your platform? That's what I want to know. Yeah, so we are based, first of all, on Ethereum and Binance. On our platform, the main benefit is ease of use. So we're not targeting the crazy nerds that have been in the space for like 10 years and know everything already. They can do their things on their own. So on, we are focusing really on onboarding new customers, new people. We have been audited multiple times. So uh, we take uh, security very, very, uh, very, very serious. And basically, we are a protocol sitting on top of other, other, other um, platforms. That's what Grigori was saying. When someone comes out with a new idea, a new way of generating yield in the market, we sit on top. We just, we're like, a, like an octopus, like, you know? We stick to them, we aggregate, we use our existing community, our army, send them to them, send funds there, you know? So we can, we can sit on top and um, yeah, generate yields for That's people. why we always say the Grizzly, he doesn't have natural enemies. That's because true. he doesn't have to fight for like a piece of the market share because he's helping to grow the whole market. And what, what is the rewarding mechanism here? Like when I'm going to invest on your platform, what kind of re rewarding? Have you launched your own token as well? Yeah. What is the typical tokenomics here? That's yeah. what I want to know. Yeah. So, um, I mean, if you want to go in, in very much detail, docs.crisi.fi, git book, you will read about everything. It will be very, we have very so nice. so many YouTube videos and... Uh, exactly, but to sum up, so since we are aggregating other projects, you get the yield that you would be getting there, but auto-compounded, and what we do is some part of the revenue goes is, is taken away, used to buy back the token and distribute to stakers. So we incentivize long-term holders um, the sta some part of the staking reward is real yield, so we, we collect fees, give it to the stakers, and we also, since we're in growth mode, we also mint some tokens, so you have some inflation as well, but long term there will be no minting anymore, only real yield, only focusing on transactions, uh, on transaction costs, and so on and so forth. Because, because then we can also survive and make progress in the bear market. Because take a look at Uniswap, they are not minting one token and they are the most successful platform and we are moving in this direction. Yeah. But uh, just one more thing, since you know, Ethereum and Binance, both are having a very high gas fee. Why not Polygon? Because Polygon is again, an extended version of Ethereum only, but with a negligible gas fee. When are, you are you from Polygon? <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> no, it's a, it, it's a good question. Actually, Polygon would be one of the next logical steps. So we focus on an existing DeFi ecosystem, right? So we, since we are this octopus that is touching all the other projects, aggregating them, we need to be where the DeFi ecosystem is, right? So we see, okay, Binance has a very interesting DeFi ecosystem. Of course, Ethereum has the, the craziest one. And then what's coming next? It's uh, Optimism, Arbitrum, and Polygon. So these are the ones that we are going to focus on next. So don't worry, sir, it's coming. Great, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Did you get your question answered? Did, hello? Did you get your question answered? Yeah, I got my answer. Happy? Thank, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> good, good. So one more question before we finish. Somebody else. Nice. I'll ask, I'll ask Gregory then and Andreas if you enjoyed your time here then. Today. It was awesome.
To be Thank honest, so I was much. a little bit nervous in the beginning, but uh, you guys were really awesome. Uh, love talking to you guys. So if you have anything to share to us, like privately, that you don't want to raise the hand and ask a question, just come up to us. We're normal guys. And you also see more people with greasy shirts. So there in the back is someone. There you have Stan. There in the back, beautiful guy, Tom. And you, there are many more here in this area. You can talk to us. Not just uh, yes, don't be shy. Yeah. <laughs> and awesome, tell them not you. very shy, correct? So thank you very much, Andreas and Gregory. Round of applause, everybody. First presentation of the day. OK, we'll take a photograph, and then we'll move on to the next presentation. So gentlemen, come this way, and we'll take a picture here. And then uh, we will get Mohammed Salman to get ready to come on next.